Hi everyone, so you may be aware that in Ableton Live 11, they've sort of updated or changed the way we get and set MIDI notes in a MIDI clip in Ableton. So there's this new get notes extended function and I'm specifically gonna look at how we use it in JavaScript because I found uh, it wasn't quite clear in the documentation quite how this works. So I, I thought I might make a video that just kind of like hopefully clears it up or puts you on the right path. So first of all, uh, in my kind of tutorial patch, we're just going to be doing something really simple. We're just going to uh, get the notes from the clip and we're going to move the pitch around and then we're going to put those notes back into another clip and we can kind of keep jittering if we want. So I'm assuming you already know about Max and JavaScript. You're probably going through and updating your old patches because you're getting warnings on them saying you're using an old method. So here's what you need to know. The most crucial thing about this get notes extended is it returns a string. And that string is like a dictionary of all the data you need. It's got key and value pairs, but you need to pass that string first to create like a JavaScript object that you can use. Once you do that, it's all way easier. I just found that they weren't that clear. They talk about it returns a list of dictionaries or something in the documentation. And JavaScript, as far as I could tell, doesn't really have dictionaries by name. Uh, but I guess if you've done programming before, maybe this is a standard thing in other programming languages or whatever. So um, anyway, so first of all, let's just look at my get notes function. Uh, I've got my variable live API, which I'm declaring globally. And this just gets the last clip you selected. I just find that's an easy way to work with these kind of mini devices. And then I'm creating a variable called notes raw because this is kind of what's pulling in our raw string once we call this function. So we call that get notes extended. Now, one thing to note here is the parameters have changed. So you're probably used to kind of selecting when you do get notes, um, you, you might do, or maybe it was just with get selected notes, but either way, the, 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 the things have changed. So now the first parameter after you declare it is um, the lowest pitch to start from for which notes you want to get. The next one is the range of pitches. So if you do zero to 127, you'll cover all the MIDI pitches. Now, then after that, we have the start position. So we're selecting everything from the very start. And I've just got a random high number to select all the way to the end. Maybe you can put zero there and it will work. I actually didn't test that out, but this works well enough. Anyway, so once we do that, notes raw becomes a string of just like um, our data and we need to pass that. So I've also got another global variable called note obj, which is our note object. So it's like a JavaScript object, I guess. So we pass that with uh, json.pass and then note object has all the information we need to kind of edit the notes in Ableton. So yeah, I think this, this step right here might just be the thing you're looking for because I mean, to me, it wasn't obvious. Maybe people that are good with programming knew to do this. Um, but yeah, I had to kind of fiddle around a little bit. So for a lot of you, might be time to that like that's all you need to know you can stop watching and go off but you might be wondering okay i can pass it into a variable how do i actually get and set the data in that variable um well all the things you need are now going to be properties of note obj and principally what you need to know is the notes property because that contains i mean notes is an array of all the notes in your clip. And you can see in my jitter pitch function, I have a for loop and I'm just getting all the notes, uh, or the number of notes in our clip just by um, doing dot length. And then once I do that, I can access, uh, for example, the pitch here and modify it with this code. So you just need to remember that dot notes. Don't just do your array like this. Uh, that won't work. You need dot notes. And I've also got this line of code here that says delete 
the note ID out of that note. The reason why I'm doing that is because uh, in my set notes function, when I add new notes, I found that if I tried to add a note that had the same note ID as another note that existed seemingly anywhere in my project, it doesn't matter if it's in that MIDI clip or not, it just wouldn't add it in. I had to delete that note ID property and then it was fine. And I think this is some approach they're taking uh, now because there's another method that's like modify existing notes or something. So if you have a set number of notes in your clip and you want to modify them, you use that function, I think. That's what it seems like what they want you to do. I'm used to, and you're probably used to this as well, especially if you're sort of modifying your existing patches. I'm used to uh, clearing all the notes in a clip and then dumping the new notes in. That was the only way I ever thought of setting notes. So that's the way I'm doing it here as well. And let's look at my set notes function. This line of code here, by the way, in case I didn't explain it, uh, it basically just selects the last MIDI clip you clicked on or selected. So that just refreshes the one that we're operating on. And then we call remove notes extended. This is the new way to clear notes out of a clip. And same parameter uh, order as our previous get notes extended, which means, um, you know, pitch and start time ranges. And then we can add new notes and as a parameter, we can just send note obj. We don't need to stringify it or anything like that. Ableton is fine with us just sending that as this like JavaScript object or variable, and it knows exactly what to do with it. It does need to, like in, in this case, it helps that we formatted it. It's already kind of formatted for us when we do this stuff up here. Um, so that's all well and good. If you're getting notes from a clip, then modifying them, then putting them somewhere else or whatever you want to do. However, if you want to roll your own kind of note dictionaries, as they say, you might want to know a little bit about, um, how we can kind of assign properties to variables in JavaScript. Now, if you're already experienced with JavaScript, you probably already know this stuff. I hadn't done too much stuff like this. So I thought I might just show you that um, just so you can learn it. Because what you'll need to do at some point is uh, make a property called notes. Because remember how we have this thing here. Um, you're going to have to specify that. If you're rolling your own note dictionaries, you need to make sure you include that. Now, just for now, I'll just go back and I'll just show you how this works. So test var is just my variable name. And inside that, I've got a property uh, I've just called it property one. You can call it whatever you want, obviously. And um, so this is like my key name. And this is the value that's associated with the key name. Now, a value doesn't just have to be a number or a string. It can be any data type. It can be an entire uh, max. Sorry, it can be an entire uh, JavaScript object. Um, and the reason why I'm pointing that out now is because if you're making your own note dictionaries, at some point you'll need to do something like this. Um, and this line of code, for example, can you'll want to just substitute that in there. So if you're making your own note dictionaries, this is a way of making sure it's formatted correctly. Basically, all your notes need to be a value of the key name notes. That's the way you need to format it. And then Ableton will accept it. Now I'm kind of new to this, so maybe I'm getting a little confused or I'm doing things in not the best way. All I know is this way works for me. Um, I'll make another video if, uh, or when I learn more about it, uh, like I've really just kind of been fiddling around with this in the last few hours. And I just made this video quickly just to help anyone who might be stuck. I think the key thing you'll get, you know, that, that, that is really not clear in the documentation is this part here. Um, and, and then the other thing that maybe is not clear is 
what is a dictionary when they say dictionary? Because you might Google JavaScript dictionary and you're like, well, it's not taking me to all the usual places to find this information. It doesn't look like they exist. This is what they mean when they say dictionary. It's not a max dict object, or at least as far as I could tell, that's not. It certainly doesn't behave like one. So don't get confused there. Hopefully I've helped not confuse you. <laughs> um, and please give me a comment uh, if you have any suggestions or if this helped you, uh, that'd be really good to hear. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.